I am John Harkless, welcome to my kitchen, and what I'm going to be doing in this video is making roasted butternut squash soup. The thing about this one is it's going to take a total time of 90 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, and that's because step one is to take a butternut squash and actually roast this whole thing. That means I've got to cut it up. The oven's already on and it's warming up, but I've got to cut this thing up, put a little olive oil on it, some salt and pepper to season, and then let it sit in the heat for like 45 minutes. Once that comes out, the rest of it is really pretty quick. If you don't want to do the roasting step, then you can cut about an hour off of your time because the only thing left is going to be cutting up carrots and apples. Those are your only sources of sugar in this thing. And then you're going to want to cut up some onion and garlic for sautéing. Now, one of the things to pay attention to with this one is if you're looking at getting it done in a short amount of time, you're going to need a pressure cooker. If you don't have a pressure cooker, then you can do it stove top. You're going to have to babysit it a bit and keep it stirring. If you've got plenty of time on your hands and you've got a slow cooker, then you can just use a slow cooker and uh, let this whole process take hours. But part of the premise behind this whole thing is we want to be able to fix food in time frames that work for people who might have schedules and a bunch of stuff to do. So in that case, best thing to do is come up with something that can work with a really great piece of tech, pressure cooker to cut down on the total amount of time you have to do and generate a lot of food in a batch. So this is going to give you a really good amount of food to work with. So all that said, let's get started with the cutting over here. So you've got uh, essentially two pieces here. You've got the fat round piece. So I'm going to chop that off and then pop that open so I can scoop out the um, seeds and everything. And then this cylindrical part, uh, I can just cut that in half and that'll give me what I need in order to put it in here and um, get everything going. So, that said, So, one of the advantages of using the roasting is that you don't have to work quite so hard to get all the flesh out. I'd have a whole lot more cutting ahead of me otherwise. Okay, so... So, with that, we've got seeds. Got to scoop that out. So I'm going to take a spoon and um, get the scraping. In the meantime, I can... So all that's done and ready. Uh, so these guys are going to go into the oven at 350 for 45 minutes. And during that time, I'm going to do some stuff like tackle some dishes, run around and do whatever. Because if we're doing this like normal people, normal people got schedules and other stuff to do. In the oven they go, and off to do other things I go. Alright, we're back. The oven has finished roasting the butternut squash. I've got my next batch of ingredients that I've got to uh, put in, uh, and we're going to get to chop it. Apple and carrot. So these apples are not the prettiest, which makes them perfect for baking. Uh, I've got my carrots, and that's going to really be the only source of sugar in this thing. No honey, no maple, no white sugar, no, none of that stuff. So it's just uh, straight up vegetables and uh, fruit in the form of an apple right now. So I'm going to cut those up. Then the next thing I'm going to have to do is cut up an onion and some garlic to saute as the starting point. Then we'll season everything up, uh, scoop out the butternut squash, add that in, and then we just need 
a little bit of liquid, vegetable broth, and boom, we're good to go. So let me get the chopping. Alright, so those guys are cut up, so now I just need to grab the squash out of the oven. It's been sitting in there for a while, so it's not dangerous for me to touch it. And look at that. Good and roasted. Take this. There's that. And let's... Uh, this wash out. And so the onion and garlic are going to get sauteed in coconut oil and I'll be using the pressure cooker to do that. That's going to take just a real quick short a couple minutes. I'll throw in the seasonings and the vegetables and then um, fire it up and wait and see. So all that's been cut up. I'm going to put this off to the side so I have room to grab pressure cooker. Put it down. I'm going to set this to saute. That's going to heat up and let me actually saute these vegetables. Um, reaching down here to get the uh, coconut oil. So, the fats that we've used so far coconut oil and uh, olive oil, both of which still keep this thing firmly in the camp of being vegan. Gonna give me a good spoon to stir with. And I'm going to uh, grab me a hunk of the good stuff. That the, we need enough to pretty much coat the bottom and make sure that the onion and garlic get done in properly. So, put that way. And now, um, so I'm leaving the onion go in first. Um, I'm just gonna make sure I move that around. So the onion's gonna get a little translucent on me, which is good. Uh, then I'll throw in the garlic. Uh, once that gets that characteristic, ooh, that smells good, then I'll know it's time to put in uh, everything else. Seasonings, the vegetables. Take it off of saute and on to uh, pressure. So this part is still actually identical to what you would do if you did not have a pressure cooker and you were just using stove top or a slow cooker. You would want to get the onion and garlic to really get the sauteed up nicely. Um, similar to the roasting step, if you skip it, it's not going to be bad. You just won't have the same quality and complexity of flavors. And since this is something that we're not in a rush to do, because this is one of those make ahead things, might as well take the time. Onions are well. It's time for the garlic. So that's going well. So now, Time to season it up. Um, since this is intended to be kind of a winter, fall kind of soup, you want the so-called warming spices. So I've got nutmeg, I've got cinnamon, I've got ginger, and just for a little bitty touch, cayenne. So I'm gonna boop, 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 cayenne. healthier amount of 
nut bag, a similarly healthy amount of the cinnamon goes in, and ginger. You can get a little more aggressive. And so at this point, you are going by feel, but essentially, you want to go ahead and give it a twirl. And as we're stirring it up, the thing you're waiting for is smelling everything. So, you lean over, you get a face full of scent, you're good to go, and you can stop it. So at this point we've stopped it. We're going to add just a touch of water. This low touch of water is going to give it an opportunity to release anything that was stuck on the bottom. So that nice little quench makes that happen. And now I can take all these ingredients I cut up earlier and just go on and scoop them right on in. So. Now, the last thing I have to do is add in vegetable stock. Set it to sealing, and I'm going to pressure cook it on high. So I need soup, and I'm going to need about 10, 12 minutes. And in the meantime, I can go off and do some other things. So I'm going to go off and do some other things. All right, last step. So we roasted the squash, had to walk away because, you know, that's taking time. Uh, cut up everything, put it in an instant pot. Took about five minutes for it to get up to pressure. And then we got um, our 12 minutes of pressure cooking. It's at 11. I'm going to go ahead and stop it and release whatever pressure's left. Shouldn't be that much, shouldn't take that long. And the next thing I have to do is add some coconut milk, unsweetened. So again, the carrot and the apple were the only sources of sugar in this thing. And so now I've got the uh, coconut milk. That's gonna add some more fat, but again, eh, it's coconut, not so bad. And this is what's gonna allow it to have that really creamy texture that everybody likes without having to throw in a whole bunch of cream and dairy. So, the whole thing still stays vegan. All right, so this is done. And I can remove the lid. Just gonna put this over here for safekeeping. And now I need to crack this open and pour it in and puree it all up. Looks good, smells good. I'm gonna get a little cup and uh, give myself a taste. So after running that boat motor through it, um, you can see you've got a nice consistency to it. And mmm, that's good soup. And I've got like a week week and a half's worth, depending on how much I eat and how quickly I eat through it. So, yay. Butternut squash soup. Roasted.